Hi there. Welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I am Theodore Henry. In today's show, we look at the restart of bauxite alumina production at the Gisco Alpart Jamaica refinery. Plus, we'll explore some of the ways to help reduce road crashes. Later, learn one of the most cost-effective ways to maintain good health. Sit back and relax for these and more to come as we turn the pages of Jamaica Magazine. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information is committed to ensuring that every Jamaican child has the best learning environment to thrive and needs your cooperation to make the education system work successfully. That is why we are ensuring that all Jamaicans have full access to secondary education. Tuition is free of cost to you, but the government can't pay for everything, so do continue with your voluntary contributions. These contributions cover the expenses of co-curricular and sports activities and school development projects. We have also increased our support for PATH students. That's right, PATH students are not expected to make contributions and they will be provided with five days of free lunches. We know that a hungry child cannot learn. The ministry has implemented a literature book rental program, free insurance and IDs for PATH students in high schools. This government cares for you. We believe that every child can learn. Every child must learn. Residents of Nain St. Elizabeth and bauxite refinery workers are happy for the renewed economic life that the restart of the bauxite and alumina production has brought back to their community. The startup and projected expansion of the Gisco Alpart bauxite alumina plant is setting the tone for increased growth and jobs in the industry. More in this feature. revival time. It is the revival of the mining industry. On June 21, 2017, Alpart Alumina Bauxite Plant in Nain, St. Elizabeth reopened and resumed alumina production six months ahead of schedule. The plant was brought back to life by its new owners, Jake One Iron and Steel Company, Gisco, and this has brought enormous opportunities for Jamaica. Already local communities in and around Nain, which saw a downturn in business and livelihood since the plant's closure in 2009, are now witnessing new life and increasing economic buzz. Production at the plant was halted in the aftermath of the global recession and a drop in metal prices. To see the plant reopened today and to hear the engines, the broilers, the steam room, to hear the hum of the plant is like music to our ears. The positive impact of Gisco reopening is being felt in the economies of Elizabeth and Manchester. The hotels and guest houses are full and reporting increased occupancy rates. The shops, the wholesalers, the bars, the farm stores, the supermarkets, and the various other establishments are reporting increased business. The opening of the plant is good for us because generally we um, people can't get employed because when the plant did close, it, it was very, very hard. You can hardly finance yourself. Everybody is feeling good to know that the plant is reopened now. As you can see, a lot of things is going on now. Kenton people are feeling good. Today now that we mark a, a new day, yes, and it's a job creation. I know it takes a lot of youth off the streets so that they can reduce them crime and so forth. The community council, the PRO at Alpart as in conjunction with the, the police, we will continue to go into the communities to sensitize the people in order to ensure that they make good of whatever economic gains they are achieving at this time. Alpart, which was previously owned and operated by Russian company UC Rasal, provided 1,000 jobs which is set to increase significantly under the new ownership. Looking back on the journey to this milestone reflects some memorable moments. 
July 19, 2016, when the sale to GISCO was finalized, and the official handing over to the Chinese company on November 24, 2016. Jiquan Iron and Steel Company Limited initially invested in excess of 360 million US dollars in its Jamaican operation. 299 million US dollars for the acquisition and more than 60 million US dollars on the rehabilitation work to facilitate its reopening. The Jamaican government provided a five year bauxite levy waiver under the condition that within three years of the reopening, GISCO will build a new 2 million ton per annum alumina plant. The new plant will complement the existing 1.65 million tons per annum facility. What we are witnessing today is a prelude to a scale of investment never before seen in this industry and an emphasis on joint venture development as we move Jamaican companies parallel to China's growth. GISCO has proposed to invest in excess of two billion US dollars to create a special economic zone with its aluminium refineries, Alpart 1 and 2, and the expansion and transformation of Port Kaiser an energy-efficient power plant, an 80-ton per annum aluminum foil fabrication plant and a tool and machinery manufacturing plant are also to be built. Further related investments in value-added industries will include limestone and cement processing. GISCO will also be ensuring that mined out lands are returned to the people for them to utilize those properties for agricultural production and other purposes. It is the intention of the government to ensure that all these investments that require high technology and high human resource capabilities, that they can be found right here in Jamaica. Specialist welders, the people who deal with specialized equipment maintenance, the engineers, we have the capacity and the capability to train them right here in Jamaica. With the new streams of business, it is also expected that foreign exchange earnings from the mining sector will increase significantly over the 540 million US dollars earned in 2016. Government is also establishing appropriate policy and legislation to underpin the new and energized mining industry to better manage the country's mineral resources in line with Jamaica's long-term development plan. Mineral sector revised, we must protect our mineral resources. We must grow and diversify this sector and live harmoniously with the environment. Productivity, Pathway to Prosperity, a message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. The government remains steadfast on the goal of reducing road fatalities and injuries through stringent legislation and enforcement, public education, and road safety features. Watch now as we learn more on the prospects for increased road safety in this next feature. Jamaicans 
and visitors is of paramount importance to us as a government and us as a people. Therefore, our aim is to make it safe and enjoyable as you travel. Road safety must become a daily part of our, day, of our lives. We must be responsible for our safety on the roads. Let's walk, ride, and drive with care, as the life we save may be our own. The JJRA feels confident that our program this year will impact drivers, motorcyclists, pedestrians, and students, making them more aware of the importance of proper road safety practices. We have to start at a tender age to regroup and educate the nation. We also undertake projects such as repainting of pedestrian crossing, facilitating blood drives and conducting driving seminars. This year we'll be adding to our project a riding seminar as motorcyclists need to be more aware of the safe practices. Government takes seriously our responsibility to create safer roads for all our people, particularly our children and other vulnerable road users. That is why we have vigorously pursued the passage of the amended Road Traffic Act, which covers areas such as the establishment of the Island Traffic Authority and its functions, the road code, classification of vehicles, revocation of certificate of fitness, application grant and refusal of learner's permit or driver's license, and of course, offenses relating to the licensing of a driver. All of which we believe are critical areas that must be targeted to reduce road fatalities. There is a black box in every vehicle. When you hear a plane crash, you hear we're looking for the black box. I only learned through this that every car that has an earbag has a black box. The black box can tell us what you were doing before and what you were doing at the point of impact. And I put in place uh, um, an issue for the holiday program workers with the Denby High School that we're going to begin to train the children at the school on the, at the fifth level, form level in how to analyze a black box in a car. Research conducted revealed that in 2014, it cost 8 billion Jamaican dollars to treat road, road crash victims at the various hospitals across the island. And indirectly affected productivity to the tune of $3 billion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we are truly to become a prosperous nation, Every individual must play his or her part in curtailing the number of crashes and the deaths and injuries that result from them. All of us, all of us must continue to do everything in our power to ensure that we keep our figures under 300. I know that is the benchmark. But we need to see if we can even lower that benchmark this year to somewhere between 250 to 275. So I therefore urge motorists to desist from speeding, wear seat belts, practice defensive driving, avoid using cell phones while driving. So again, I encourage pedestrians to use the road with caution. Use pedestrian crossings or safe places, walk facing the oncoming traffic, and again, always wear bright colors and light, bright and light color clothing when in the dark. Take road safety practices seriously and make a dent in the high fatality rate associated with motor vehicle crashes which plague our nation.
more alive. More memories. More moments. Jamaica Moves is a call to action to prevent non-communicable diseases. Get active, eat healthy. You can protect yourself from high blood pressure, obesity, asthma, certain cancer diseases, and more. Non-communicable diseases such as cancers, diabetes, heart disease, and hypertension remain the major causes of deaths among Jamaicans. But these lifestyle-related diseases can be prevented and controlled if we all practice healthy lifestyle choices, such as proper dieting and regular exercise. Let's now look at physical exercise and the benefits to your health. It keeps you young, make you look good in your clothes. Make you attractive to opposite sex. It's only a matter of fitness and health. It keep me vigorous and keep my youth. It's the healthy way, I want to say, slim. It is true that many of us know that exercise is good for us, but we avoid it. Why? Because we are afraid that exercise has to be vigorous before it can be effective. But physical trainers say this is not true. Every little bit counts. It all adds up to burning more calories. We may not be ready for a structured program like going to the gym, but we can start small. The first thing that exercises help us to do is to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And the first thing that we want when we exercise is to live long. And so the longevity of life is, is in fact guaranteed for persons who live a healthy lifestyle by form of exercise. Medical experts say if we are not engaging in enough physical activities, we are at major risk for developing coronary artery disease. It can also contribute to other risk factors like obesity, high blood pressure and diabetes. However, physical trainers say before we start a vigorous exercise program, there are a few things we must do. You need to consult your physician first, get an okay from them, and then you proceed with your exercise. And we would advise you not to start vigorously. Start exercising at slow paces, gradually getting into the vigorous aspect of the exercise. According to physical trainers, we must do any moderate to vigorous aerobic activity for a minimum of 30 minutes at least three to four times per week. This is to reduce or eliminate some of the risks associated with a lack of physical activity as part of our regular routine. Here we go. Moderate physical activity may include brisk walking, gardening, raking leaves, sweeping the floor, pacing while you talk. When you're on the phone, pace around. This is a great way to stay moving while doing something you enjoy. Getting up each hour to stretch or walk, walk the stairs at work, and dancing can also make a difference. You don't have to go to a gym to exercise. And exercise is um, usually a routine that you consistently do, whether it's at home or at school, that you benefit from, the heart and the lungs and the other aspects of your body benefit from. Stretching and aerobics are some of the exercises that we can do at home to help us keep fit and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Aerobic exercises strengthen your heart and burn calories. According to physical trainers, Stretching exercises are essential for keeping our muscles flexible and our joints strong. You can stretch the body every day. We can all do exercise, 
I would probably only limit to the persons who are paralyzed from probably waist down. But even the persons who are paralyzed from waist down, their, their arms are able to, to, to do something. So you can do something with the hands. Physical trainers say if you experience any of the following symptoms during exercise, you must stop and rest. Dizziness or lightheadedness, abnormal heart rhythm, pain in the chest, under the breastbone, and or down the arm, pain in the knees, feet, or ankles. After, stop and rest. If the symptoms persist, you must call your doctor. I feel stronger, flexible. I feel so refreshed and like I can take on a day. And I think it has helped to make me look youthful, so exercise is great. It firms up your muscles and um, it gives you more energy. We can all improve our health and well-being and have fun by including moderate amounts of physical activity in our daily lives. Remember, if fitness is the goal, exercise is the way to get there. Be health-wise. Right, Anonymously report allegations of corruption, bribery, fraud, or acts of malfeasance. Help the Revenue Protection Division, RPD, secure the government's revenue. To help, citizens may call the Revenue Protection Division at 1-888-225-5773 or Crime Stop at 311. The RPD, partnering with you, securing the public purse for growth and development. On the board this week, the Ensom City Gospel Chapel will be having its Festival of Praise on Saturday, August 26. It will be held at the church, Lot 1, Eltham Farms, Garden Pen, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Starting time is 6 p.m. Come hear the Olivet Singers, Elim Gospel Chapel Singers, God's Next Generation and the Melody Singers. Admission is free. The Electoral Office of Jamaica, EOJ, wishes to advise the public that elector registration identification cards for electors added to the May 31, 2017 voters list are now available. ID cards must be collected by electors at their respective EOJ constituency office. All current elector registration cards are valid until December 31, 2017. The ECJ will commence a house-to-house -house enumeration exercise this financial year to create a new voters list and new cards. And that's all for our community notices today. Send us your events for broadcast on the JIS Community Notice Board. Call 922-8680-2 or send an email to cbishop at jis.gov.jm. Nominations are now open for the 2017 Prime Minister's Youth Awards for Excellence. Persons 15 to 29 years old may apply and be recognized for their work in 11 exciting categories. There's also a Jamaica 55 commemorative category for youth engaged in community-based volunteerism. Access nomination forms by visiting moey.gov.jm, youthjamaica.com or any youth information center across the island. Nominations close August 31. And now for some of the stories in our news this week. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. The Ministry of Education is reporting improved pass rates for 18 of 34 subjects in this year's Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC examinations. Five subjects had average pass rates of over 90%. These include Agricultural Science Double Award, 96.8%, Agricultural Science Single Award, 91.3%, Principles of Business, uh, we've been doing quite well in as a country, hope we can translate that in actual business on the ground, 91.4%, Physical Education, wow, that's very good, we're good at sports as well, 96.2%, and food and nutrition, 92%. So these are uh, very positive achievements. Meanwhile, there was a 3% improvement in the overall performance of CAPE students. 
Four new vehicles were presented to area and shift commanders in the Area 2 Police Division this week. They are among 24 new vehicles procured for divisional commanders across the force. Every shift has a commander and this person is the person that will run the division for that ship and that person ought to visit the stations to check on the cells, to check on the records, to check on the deployment and the deportment of the men and women serving. It is estimated that once you have proper management in place, the results should go up by about 30%. Meanwhile, the security ministry has partnered with its agriculture counterpart to boost crop production at correctional institutions, starting with 300 acres at the Richmond Farm Adult Correctional Center in St. Mary. Together, you're going to see better use because we will gain technical expertise from them. We will gain the use of equipment. Um, some of the programs that they are going to be rolling out in the near future, they know that they have acreage here available to carry out those programs and the labor. So you're going to see a lot of positive things coming from this collaboration. The Ministry of Health is carrying out training of medical practitioners to be certified prescribers of medical marijuana. 80 persons were trained in two workshops held in July, while another batch is to receive training in October. The design for government's proposed communications network, GovNet, has been completed. GovNet will be a secure wide area network communication infrastructure that will connect government ministries, agencies and departments to facilitate shared services. We are at a point where we are ready and in fact will start the rollout of GovNet. Uh, it's indeed a significant footprint now as it relates to building out a, a, a truly digital society and a digital government. Residents of Mountainside and Park Lee in southwest St. Elizabeth now have electricity in their homes, courtesy of a project by National Energy Solutions Limited. Energy efficiency and conservation is key. So it is not free light. It comes with responsibility. And just as much as your, your house is wired and you get electricity, if you don't pay a bill, JPS won't come and cut it off. And finally, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is reassuring the business community that government will continue to create a stable fiscal policy environment which supports investments. Those were some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. And that brings us to the end of today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Join us again tomorrow when we'll do this all over again. Until then, you can click online at jis.gov.jm and visit our YouTube channel to get the latest government information. Also, follow us on Twitter and Facebook and download our app from the Google Play Store to stay informed on the go. I'm Theodore Henry, wishing you peace and prosperity. Take care of your health, exercise, eat well, get adequate rest, and make every day a productive one. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.